Hello there, so in this video I'm going to be talking about how to hopefully get an A grade for your IB Theory of Knowledge, or TOK, exhibition. Uh, I work as an IB Diploma Coordinator and TOK Coordinator, uh, so I'm hoping that some of these tips may help you a little bit. Now the, the way I've done this um, is really to, to talk through the process. I did my own exhibition to see what it was like, and I wanted to kind of talk, through, talk you through the steps that I took as I built my exhibition. Now, obviously, there's more than one way to do this, but I, this is the way that worked for me. So the first thing was I knew the exhibitions should relate to my own life and interest as they should relate to your own. And I thought, as I'm, I'm an English teacher, I thought language initially would be an area of knowledge that I could play with and, and look at. So I started to look at different types of writing I'd done and I'd read. Um, and I thought one particular area of interest might be uh, travel writing. I, I write for Lonely Planet now and again. And so I got thinking about travel reviews and my beliefs of what I knew about these. And that led me to TripAdvisor, which is a very different kind of travel writing and the kind of knowledge that people uh, gain from this. And so I thought that would be an interesting initial object, maybe a screenshot or something like that, uh, that I could develop. Now, at this stage, I hadn't really got a prompt. I was fairly open to what kind of prompt I was uh, look, wanting to use. So once I got here, I, I started looking at all the different prompts, and there's quite a lot of them. Uh, and I thought, OK, which ones are going to work with this initial idea? And I came up with three you can see on screen there. I thought one of those may fit. Um, and I wanted to keep it fairly open because obviously I haven't um, got the other two objects at this stage. So I wanted to play around with these ideas and, and see which one would, would really work. On top of that, I also knew I, I needed to look at the knowledge frameworks and also my own notes and understanding of the areas of knowledge um, because it needs to become a, a TOK discussion, not just a discussion about your object and what you feel about it. So at this stage, as it says, I, I kind of looked at other possible objects that could link to a particular prompt. And once I had that, it seemed to kind of fall into place more easily. So this is the first object I was talking about, the TripAdvisor uh, screenshot. Um, and this is the prompt I settled on. Is bias inevitable in the production of knowledge? So I've got uh, the picture there, my object, and a source. Don't forget to put a source in uh, for, for the image if you're using one. So this is my initial description. The sections that are in italics and in, inside brackets, they're then just me explaining uh, what I was thinking. So initially, um, I just need to describe the object. Uh, I don't want to take too long doing this because I've only got about maybe 320 or so words for each description. So the initial part needs to be fairly short, especially if it's obvious that everybody knows what TripAdvisor is. Don't need to explain that. Once I've done that, I can go into a little bit more detail about what I know about this site, what I feel about it, what I think I know, and then link to the prompt. So I want to do that quite quickly. Um, you can see I start to look at this in the second and third paragraph here. Uh, I, I get, get into a discussion about the prompt and why I've justified using this object, which is a big part of the mark, screen, mark, screen, sorry, mark scheme. So you can see there's a lot of personal background here at the initial stage. Um, but after this, I want to try and get into a more general, broad discussion about the prompt. Um, and this object is my initial uh, way into this. You can see here uh, a bit more, a bit more of a, a broader discussion about um, what actually what initially I thought was going to be language, but it kind of turned more into uh, an area of knowledge as technology, uh, and that's that's fine. That's just the way it, the way it, it, it flowed. Um, you can pause this if you wish to go through it. Um, it ended up at about or ended up at exactly three hundred and thirteen words, so that's about about right for my first object. Now, second object. Um, because I'd, I'd chosen it, what, what effectively did become a language, a technology type of uh, discussion in the first object, I wanted something a little different for the second. Um, and I'd been starting to learn Japanese a little bit, and I came across this word ikigai, uh, which really means life's purpose or your, your purpose in life. And there isn't really an equivalent uh, in English that it's something you can sum up in a single word. So I thought that was interesting. And, and what does that tell me about? Uh, bias within maybe a culture or a language. So again, I, I, some notes here for you. I knew that I, I, I definitely wanted to use Sapir-Whorf um, hypothesis. I thought that could be quite useful. 
uh, in terms of how different languages determine what we what we think. And so I started to discuss it again. Um, you can see here that the initial definition is pretty short. I don't need to go into too much more detail than that. Um, and then I began personalizing it. Um, and as it says here, if you can't say something, can you actually know it? Which is nice, a nice link from the word, I think, into the prompt and into a TOK discussion. So then I start using a little bit of TOK language here of this hypothesis uh, and the kind of bias that we may bring um, due to our, our language background. And again, I go through a little bit more here. And at this point in the discussion, I want to broaden it out, make a little uh, wider. So I, I think about in Shakespeare's uh, Romeo and Juliet, um, his um, discussion about language or Juliet's discussion about how whether a word is important or not, whether it's the actual object that's the, the important thing. Uh, and then another discussion uh, about um, colours and the use of colour and whether that uh, affects how we literally, how we see things. So a much broader discussion, but also at the end, want to bring it back to the prompt, make sure it's focused around the prompt, um, and wrap everything up like that. So this one, 322 words. So again, not, not too bad. Third object. Now, I knew I'd done technology and language at this point, and there's nothing to stop you doing them all on the same area of knowledge. But if you do, you've got to make sure that the points you make are different ones and separate ones. Otherwise, you're just repeating yourself. And also, you certainly don't need to compare the objects. You see, I haven't done that so far here. So the third one, I thought the arts would be an interesting area to look at. Uh, and this particular um, object I found was quite interesting. I thought this is a journalist. Um, this is a picture of the journalist. And she sent her image to digital editors around the world in different countries, different cultures, and basically said, can you make me beautiful based on your standards of beauty? There's a link there if you want to explore and see the results. Um, and I thought, well, that, again, that ties in very nicely with with bias and whether it is inevitable and what we agree is beautiful. So the way I did this, um, firstly, I actually copied the prompt. You might want to do this for each section. I copied the prompt um, just so I was looking at it, physically looking at it when I was writing and I had that in my uh, my line of sight the whole time. Then started, started discussing the, the, uh, the, uh, the third object here. You can see the definition here, the, the description is a little longer because um, the examiners may well not know this example. So I just need to explain what that is. I then introduced the, um, my, my connection with this object and why I thought it was interesting. And you can see down here, um, I start to introduce the prompt, uh, link to that, and, and show the, the connection to it. Now move on here. Uh, last part, you can see again, I'm moving away from the prompt now into a more general discussion about art, about Plato and Aristotle, and what is the purpose of art, uh, and is there a bias? Um, should it be should it be biased, indeed? Um, and what does that tell us about our societies and, and consumers, maybe in today's world? So that was pretty much where I got to, and luckily it topped out at 949 words, which was uh, rather rather fortunate. Um, and I thought, that that's not a bad uh, way to go through it. So this is the process I used. Um, you may use other processes. You may want to come up with a prompt first and, and work that way around. Um, but this worked for me. And so I hope those steps have, have shown you one, one way that you can uh, do an, an exhibition. So if that was useful, feel free to like, comment or subscribe. And good luck with your own exhibition for TOK.